Recall that atoms are more stable when their valence orbitals are full. Atoms can exchange electrons and become charged. When atoms do this and stay together because opposite charges attract, they are called ionic compounds. Ionic compounds tend to form between metals which have low electronegativity and nonmetals which have high electronegativity. Electronegativity is an atom's desire to get more electrons. In general, as we move up and right on the periodic table, electronegativity increases. This is discounting noble gases and a few like hydrogen that do not follow the general trend. So an ionic compound would form between an alkali metal and a halogen, which is a very electronegative kind of nonmetal, or an alkaline metal and another nonmetal. The transition metals and rare earth elements also have a relatively low electronegativity, whereas metalloids can act like nonmetals with higher electronegativity, or metals with lower electronegativity. The metalloids above the stair shaped line drawn on this periodic table act like nonmetals most often, whereas those beneath it act like metals most often. There is another kind of compound called a covalent compound, or molecule. Molecules form when two atoms on the right side of the periodic table, usually nonmetals, with relatively similar electronegativities, share electrons to become stable. The shared electrons act as if they belong to both atoms and increase the stability of all of the atoms involved. Water is both a property of life and a molecule. Here is how it forms. Notice, shared electrons make a new orbital and circulate around both atoms. Oxygen and two hydrogens share electrons. We can use a Lewis dot drawing to illustrate this. We would draw a structural formula like this where the line represents one pair of shared electrons between each hydrogen and oxygen. Atoms can share electrons evenly or unevenly. Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, so it shares unevenly. Let's look again at the animated water molecule. Oxygen takes the electrons most often, so it becomes the negative side of the molecule. Hydrogen becomes positive because it has the electrons least often. Water is extremely polar. It has a positive and a negative side. Because, let's face it, oxygen is an electron hog. <laughs> Give me your electrons! This polarity explains many of water's unique properties. Property 1. Water molecules have cohesion. There are strong hydrogen bonds between molecules of water. This gives water a high surface tension. Notice these insects scurrying along the surface of the water, or the leaves floating. Water moderates temperature. Temperature is a measure of the average motion of molecules in a substance. It takes a lot of energy to increase the motion of water, and while energy is added to solid ice and the water is melting or turning into liquid, all of the energy added goes towards breaking bonds and the temperature of the water does not increase. This is why an ice bath is 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the same temperature as a block of ice. Once the ice is gone, liquid water will absorb energy as its temperature rises. Water has a high specific heat. This means it takes a lot of energy to increase its temperature. Once water reaches 100 degrees Celsius and starts to evaporate, it stays 100 degrees Celsius until all the water becomes gas. From liquid to gas, water absorbs an incredible amount of energy. This is why coastal regions tend to have more mild temperatures than inland regions of the same latitude. Water 
insulates itself from cold because it is less dense as a solid. As the temperature of water decreases, it becomes more and more dense, like most substances. However, just before freezing, the molecules spread apart as they form the solid lattice of ice. This means ice is less dense than liquid water. Ice floats to the top and insulates the water beneath from bitter temperatures. This means when the top of a lake freezes, life can still survive beneath the ice. Finally, the incredible polarity of water causes ions and other polar molecules to dissolve in it. Watch as this ionic compound called sodium chloride or salt dissolves. How can even these large crystals disappear in water? It is because water molecules are polar and charged particles are attracted and surrounded by the H2O molecules. Watch as the positive sides of the hydrogen surround the negative chlorine ions, while the negative oxygen sides surround the positive sodium ions. Water is called the universal solvent for this reason. Music